My name is Jackie, and I have two quick disclaimers. The first of which is, is that if I vomit or cry during this talk, it's because I'm pregnant, and it's not because of any reflection on McMenamin's food quality. And the second is, is that I have a PhD in biochemistry, not an MD. So after this talk, when you want to show me your open sore, I am not going to help you with that. Um, so the topic of my talk today is the skin we're in, and I'm here to tell you about collagen, which is an amazing molecule. It is flexible, it is strong, it is gross, it is profitable, it is amazing. So collagen is something that is in all of us. It makes up over 25% of our total protein weight. And if you wanted to do some quick mental math, the next slide tells you exactly what 25% of my body weight is. So go ahead, use your smartphones and figure it out. But collagen is the major component in skin, tendon, bone, teeth, all those parts of your body. And as such, it is an important structural element of the human body and holds us all together. This is in part because it has an amazing molecular structure. It is formed of three long strands of protein that form together into a very tight triple helix. This particular formulation is so strong, it confers great tensile strength to any molecule that it is involved with. Collagen molecules align themselves to create these fibrils. This is an electron micrograph. And they organize themselves so cleanly that they make these banding patterns. Depending on how tightly the collagen is cross-linked to its neighbor determines what kind of collagen it is. There are 30 different types of collagen molecules, and they can make up skin, tendon, and bone based on how tightly they're connected to each other. Bone, for example, has minerals embedded into the collagen matrix. So that's healthy collagen. Healthy collagen is why our skin is supple and why our tendons bend and why our bones are strong. But collagen can go really horribly wrong. And so originally I was going to try and find the most disgusting slides I could of collagen things, like just go to Google Images and Google skin disease and you will be completely grossed out. And then I realized that I'm more likely to vomit than you are. Um, so I ended up deciding that I was just going to show a couple of my favorite collagenous diseases for your entertainment. <laughs> Um, so the first of which, this is actually not a collagen disease, it's a skin disease. And the reason why I show this, it's vitiligo, it's a complete lack of pigment that affects Michael Jackson, and also myself. And this is the game I tell people, I have vitiligo, guess where it is on my body. Um, but the most, you can't see it, the most... <laughs> Famous collagen disease is scurvy. Ascorbic acid or vitamin C is absolutely necessary for collagen to make that triple helix strong and stable. Without it, you're going to turn into a sailor that has bleeding gums, teeth that fall out, and sallow skin. American diets, we get vitamin C in a lot of our food, but graduate students who eat only ramen noodle can get scurvy. Horse disease. This is HERDA. This horse disease is caused by a genetic defect in collagen that is not stable at high temperatures. Expose this horse to temperature above 100 degrees and its skin will fall off in chunks. Human disease, osteogenesis imperfecta. A spectrum of it is shown here. On the mild side, the adults with OI are tend to be short in stature. On the more extreme end of the spectrum, they have curved bones. And of course, it can be embryonic lethal. Now, why should we research collagen? Collagen is important because its structural stability makes it absolutely unique and valuable as a biomolecule, and collagen is important in so many different biological processes. Now, in my own research, people always say, oh, you studied collagen, how cool. I had to get the collagen from somewhere, and I got it from 144 chicken eggs at a time with one very large cup of coffee. So whenever anyone talks about collagen, particularly the collagen they're injecting into various parts of their body, it comes from something like this. Now, collagen is really a hot topic in cancer research right now because cancer has been shown to metastasize by working with or against the surrounding collagen molecules. So this makes working with collagen a hot topic for figuring out how we can stop cancer from progressing. Now, collagen has sold out worse than a Kardashian. Now, <laughs> it has been featured in glues for as long as there's been horse hooves around, but collagen has recently shown up in products as varied as teas and supplements and creams. And here's the deal. If you're taking a collagen supplement, when you eat a roast rump, you don't expect it to show up on your butt right away. When you eat collagen, don't expect it to show up on your skin. It's a protein. It's going to get digested. Now, the most biggest sellout of collagen is in the trout pout. Collagen has been used as an injectable for cosmetic reasons for quite a long time, and this has some great disadvantages. It can be an allergic response if you're not uh, matched up to the collagen donor, and also it just makes you look ridiculous. 
Now, the one thing I get asked a lot about is face creams. These are some of the most expensive creams on the market. Collagen is a really good barrier. So the reason why we don't leak out of our skin is because it's holding it all back, which also means that when you're using a face cream, all that it is is really expensive spackle. So uh, that's a little bit about collagen. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>